Well, now, I think we can depart. The rhetorical question filled Voyager's cavernous bridge. Ensign Churn, set the course and signal the Sovereign. Affirmative, Admiral. Course laid in, half impulse. Above and past Admiral Patterson's commanding form, next to the barrier rails, settled Lieutenant Kim and Icheb. Harry, the last of Voyager's original crew complement, leaned against the handrail away from his station. The sensation unsettled, like it would a Klingon warrior at a Vulcan wedding. A bridge officer with nothing to involve himself with. Icheb's presence aided Harry's mood as Icheb also stood passive to Patterson's directives. But Icheb didn't employ the same mindset. He perpetually assigned himself tasks to complete. Sir, Warp 2 is available if you want. Theodoric, standing in the middle of the bridge, faced the young man's voice, interrupting mundane Starfleet protocol. How so, Mr. Icheb? I can plot a course for both ships with Voyager's enhanced sensors. It would allow us to arrive in 20 seconds instead of 12 minutes. Admiral Patterson eyeballed long enough that everyone on the bridge looked up. Icheb stood firm, stared back, unconcerned, waiting for his answer. The old man straightened up as he replied, Impressive, I'll take it. Relay the instructions to the Sovereign. Icheb committed his energy to the science station. Moments of button pressing passed. Incited by Voyager's escort ship, the con beeped. Ensign Churn relayed a message. Sir, Commander Harkness is asking for confirmation with the course update. He also says it's ill-advised. I'm well aware of the risk. Proceed. The Admiral's attention never left Icheb as he spoke to his helmsman. Patterson had read Voyager's extended crew manifest. The opportunity to collaborate with Icheb presented itself. He appreciated the quiet confidence. Usually a slight panic lived on shoulders of lower ranks, unaccustomed to interacting with his orders. He saw it anew in Lieutenant Kim. Theodoric wondered if Icheb's Brunali, or Borg programming, offered the course correction, and wondered which part of Icheb almost outstared him. Behind the Admiral on the viewer, the twenty seconds of faster-than-light travel ended with Voyager's warp bubble collapsing. No collision event with a planetary body occurred. Icheb's maths transported both ships to where he calculated. The viewscreen presented an extraordinary panorama of Utopia Planitia's fleet yard. Dozens of orbital dry dock platforms floated, surrounded with the most intense ship traffic aside from Earth's. The view from a distance showed everything appearing simultaneously busy, but altogether motionless, like watching ants in a procession from afar. Though imperceptibly delicate, painstaking starship assemblage took place. Ships constructed from their space frames and filled out deck by deck, section by section, grew little by little every moment. Newest iterations of galaxy and sovereign-class starships distinguished themselves first, they being the largest definable objects with support elements attached. Scattered around in different stages of construction orbited Norway, Steamrunner and Defiant-class ships. Each ship squinted at a sister ship to Voyager. Every object in this shipyard, sprinkled across the planet's upper exosphere, operated under Admiral Patterson's direct purview. Thank you, Ichep. Ensign, what's the Sovereign's status? They report all systems as normal, sir. Theodoric, indifferent to the view, caught Mr. Kim's eyes, mesmerized with everything, as the con officer explained. After graduating, Starfleet immediately assigned Harry to Voyager. This was his first time seeing the fleet yard in person. Now you know why I am eager to return, Lieutenant. Before Harry's eyes latched onto anything in particular, the first person freed from the Borg Collective strode onto the bridge. The Sovereign crew members at her friend's stations didn't intimidate her, and she didn't care for Starfleet's achievements outside. Seven pointed her strict posture at the Admiral, acknowledging him for the first time. Her arms relaxed behind her back. Admiral. Patterson, arms resting behind him, moved his gaze away from Harry, acknowledging her forceful spirit. Theodoric assessed her stance, another individual, unconcerned with his presence, as though he made no impression on them. Ah, Nine. Pleased to meet you finally. A perplexed Seven countered with a question. Number Nine? Number Nine? He asked, confused. Icheb, with his voice low and his hive high, 
addressed the older gentleman. Sir, her designation is Seven of Nine, or Seven. Bridge officers glanced at Admiral Patterson. A pause hung between the would-be cadet, the misnamed woman, and himself. I see. Who was to know? He uttered his answer while glimpsing at Harry. He'd been referring to Seven earlier as Nine. The Admiral thrusted his error out between his shoulder blades. My apologies, Seven. She nodded and shared a raised eyebrow with her young defender. Harry hid his embarrassment, having not corrected Patterson earlier. He looked ahead as though nothing had happened. Approach control. This is the USS Voyager, ready for docking maneuver. This is Utopia Planitia Control. Voyager is cleared to dock. Systems locked. Enjoy the ride, Voyager. Shipyard, you have control. Everyone silent, watched as a small auxiliary craft escorted Voyager to her mooring spot for her refit. <laughs>